Welcome back or welcome if you're new to the channel. This is the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 Chromebook. It's a 14 inch mid-range Chromebook but with a bit of a twist when it comes to the specs. In this full video review I'll take you through all you need to know about it to help you consider if it's the right Chromebook for you and even see how it handles a bit of gaming. This particular model I have packs some comparatively higher end components for the price I paid. It comes with 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage and the AMD 3015CE processor. It's also got a full HD touchscreen. If you watch my YouTube shorts you'll have seen the original unboxing and first impressions video I uploaded about a month ago. I'll link to that and any others I mention in the video description down below. Check the video description for a link to this Chromebook, but if you follow me on Twitter you'll have seen I paid just £150 for this Chromebook brand new, which in the UK for a Chromebook with 8GB of RAM new is kind of unheard of. That's about the equivalent of US$166. dollars. In the hand the initial impressions are fairly good, it does have an aluminium or aluminium lid, but the rest of the build is plastic as you may expect, and it weighs in at about £3.17, that's about 1.44kg. Not too bad, just a little over the lightest 14 inch Chromebook. I've seen with a touchscreen, that was the Asus Flip C433, a more premium model. Keep in mind this is running 64-bit Chrome OS and has a long update life ahead of it too, with updates to Chrome OS all the way through to June 2029. There's a fair selection of ports but sadly no dual USB-C. On the left hand side you do get the one USB-C port for power, data and display out, a full size USB-A port, a headphone jack and a micro SD card reader slot. Over on the right you get a second full size USB-A port, an HDMI connection and a Kensington lock port. Display out over my USB-C hub worked absolutely fine as you'd expect, more on that in the video linked in the description. And on the bottom of the machine it's pretty minimalistic, just the rubber supports and the keyboard drain holes to spot. Looking at the keyboard deck this is really where you can tell it's more of a mid-range budget Chromebook. It's not backlit as you'd expect and the keys are fairly shallow, they're just a little bit mushy and there is a flex in the plastic to the keyboard deck, but almost what I'd expect in models like this. The bigger issue for me is really the trackpad, quite often they can feel a bit loose on more budget machines. It's not really that in this case, it's more that it's loud and even when you're tapping on it rather than clicking, as you can hear here. At the top of the keyboard deck you'll find the speaker grill, so it's nice to have upward firing speakers rather than having them on the bottom of the machine, but the full grill look is clearly more for styling as there are just two small speakers placed either side. They get loud enough, but as you'd expect from a mid-range Chromebook there's not much quality to the sound and it's certainly lacking bass. Here's an example outro from one of my other videos that I'll link in the description below. The screen is a full HD IPS touchscreen, Lenovo claim it's 300 nits, I'd say it certainly gets bright enough for general use. The touch response is generally good and you can put the screen back 180 degrees but it's not a convertible model. At the top of the screen you'll find the 720p webcam, here are some sample shots and video, it does the job but it won't blow you away as is the case with most Chromebook webcams. It is nice to see Lenovo included a physical webcam privacy slider which is becoming more the norm now. Performance with the AMD 3015C processor and 8GB of RAM in this Chromebook is pretty snappy as you'd imagine. There might be a slight trade off on battery life as I feel like I've wanted to charge this more at the end of most days rather than getting to the second day before needing to. I've also found that I'm running the screen more toward the top level of brightness, but not always at the full brightness level as shown in the screenshot here. Here's a bit of Roblox running on it. Now, whilst I still think in Chrome OS 8GB of RAM might be overkill for most users, whereas in Windows it's pretty much a bare minimum essential for everyone, it does help in future-proofing you, and also with gaming, especially if you're going to be running multiple browser sessions and Android apps at the same time. Here in Roblox you can see the action is pretty fluid, and you can check out the video description if you want to see how to connect your PS4, PS5 or Xbox controller to your Chromebook. As I'd had a couple of comments and requests about PUBG Mobile from Jules2K and Otranen, let's see how that runs. I installed the HD resource pack and it seemed to install and run fine, although note the PS4 controller was only any good for operating the camera view, nothing else, so sadly out of the box that doesn't seem fully compatible with this game. When 
revisiting today whilst filming, I was getting this error suggesting that an emulator had been detected. No idea why that was being caused, so let me know in the comments down below if you're aware of why I'd see that message. And do let me know what else you want to see me test on a Chromebook and what other detail I can get for you on PUBG Mobile in particular. Do give a like if this one's been useful and if you are looking for a 14 inch Chromebook or similar, definitely check out this playlist of other reviews from the channel.